Welcome to The Bright Side of 50, the podcast that celebrates life, wisdom, and the vibrant journey that can be ours when we embrace the second half of life. I am your host, Carla Palmer. Together, we will explore the stories, memorable experiences, and the teachable moments that make life after 50 truly incredible. Now, let's get into today's topic, shall we? Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Bright Side of 50 with your host, Carla Palmer. I'm so excited that you guys are with me today, and I have a very special guest. Hello, Leslie. Hello, Carla. Happy to be here. I'm so happy that you're here, too, guys. I want to really introduce Leslie Renee Briscoe Andrews. She is the Director of Merchandising at The Home Depot. And Leslie can share a little bit about her background in retail with us. Sure. So I am currently director of merchandising um, at Home Depot over the back decor area. Um, And I've actually had a career in retailing um, at an executive level for almost 30 years. I've been um, on the finance side, mostly merchandising and a little bit of planning. Amazing. So you don't have 30 years of success in an industry, continuing to excel over and over again without having some strong skills in organizing and time management, right? Absolutely. It is um, essential. And I can definitely say through the years, I've had to hone my skills. I've had to uh, make adjustments and changes just as levels of responsibility have increased, decreased, teams change, that type of thing. Um, But it's definitely been a lifelong process that I've been able to get to a really good place. um, And I'm now able to share that with others. And I'm excited that you're able to share that with others, especially here in the community that I have, the bright side of 50, because, you know, there are some women here who are leaders. There are some women here who are running businesses, Mm -hmm. women who are married, married with children. There's just a lot to juggle, right? Especially, you know, as a successful career woman. So I want to talk about this masterclass that you're having. Mm -hmm. Let's conquer the chaos. Yes. So tell me why you, why you're bringing this to everybody. So let's conquer the chaos kind of came out of really just my own chaos and my own life over the years. Um, I would say I never had a title to it. Um, but over the years, people would always say to me, wow, you really handle a lot. You can juggle a lot. You're really good at time management and executing, and you have such a high level of productivity. Like, what is it? What do you do? Um, my family calls me the chaos coordinator. My sister and I actually have t-shirts that say chaos coordinators because she also has the superpower of being able to juggle a lot of things. Um, And, you know, when you're good at something or God gives you with something, you don't necessarily think it's of value to other people. It's just kind of who you are and how you operate. So over the years, um, I've been asked for help with just mentors and people that I work with in my job. But then it kind of moved into my personal side of life where people would say to me, hey, like, can you help me with this project or you can help me, you know, get organized Um, things as simple as working with my daughter in scheduling her game plan for school. Um, and then during COVID, I was working with Tiara Destiny Reed, who we both have worked with in the past. And she Hi, Tiara. Hi, Tiara. <laughs> we love you. We love you. And she said to me, man, I need some of what you have. And she's like, would you work with me? And so she and I did a blueprint together. And my part of the blueprint, which is how I met you, Carla, is was the planning, the productivity, the organization. And from that grew just how much I enjoyed teaching it and sharing the tools and things that I had worked and honed over the years. So we then created a workshop and I kicked that off probably about three years ago now, two years ago, where I did a Conquer the Chaos workshop and then had an opportunity for people to be a part of an accountability group. So we did a six month or maybe it was nine months, but we did an accountability group where I had a group of women um, that had all different levels of, you know, where they were in their professional careers. They just were trying to conquer their chaos. And we committed to each other. We committed to meeting once a week for six months to tackle their chaos. And from that, I learned a lot. 
gained a lot, asked for testimonials, what worked, what didn't. And it helped me really kind of craft the workshop. But then it also got me to thinking about a workbook, um, a tool that if somebody took my workshop that they could use as a supplement, but a tool for people that just are like, I need to get organized. I need some um, basic pillars of how to get organized. And I wanted my workbook to be able to support that as well. So recently I completed my workbook called Let's Conquer the Chaos. And because of that, I sat on it for a little while and then decided I need to talk about this. You know, I had somebody that I worked with in the past come back to me and say, hey, are you still teaching that class? And a friend of mine, Terry, reached out to me and she was like, I need your help. Are you still teaching that class? So um, instead of making it harder than it should be, which I easily did sometimes and everything wasn't perfect and aligned, um, I was like, I ta actually had a conversation with Tiara and she helped simplify it for me. She was like, just do a workshop, just see what happens, put it out there, see if there's, you know, an interest. And so I sat there crafting a post while I was watching the uh, Michigan game on Monday night and I put it out there. It was probably 11 o'clock at night, my time. And I'm like, well, we'll see what happens. And I'm like, I'll do it for a really, really, really great opening price point. Um, so it's 2024. I'm like, I'm going to do it for $24 on January the 24th, 90 minutes, pop in, teach this workshop, get people engaged. And I woke up the next day with orders and with people signing up. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay. People do need this. Um, so it's exciting. Yeah, pe people need it. And then I'm sure there are people out there like me who can vouch for the value that you bring mm -hmm. to your community and your talents and your skills are unmatched. And I, mm -hmm. I know that people are going to walk away with things that they can apply immediately. And that's the, you know, that's the goal. That's the purpose, that's the purpose. of that's all the purpose. of this, right? To give somebody a taste of what you have to offer mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. small price point mm -hmm. right, where you just, you feel like I can't pass this up. Right. It's it like wouldn't my... make sense for, I'm telling you guys right now, it doesn't make <laughs> sense for you to pass on this opportunity mm -hmm. because even if they take away three things, exactly. it's going to make their life better. Exactly. And that's the thing. Um, a lot of times you give these tips, these tricks, and to me, it's like something that I do every day. But for some other people, they're like, this is a game changer. Why didn't I ever know, think of this or know this? And so it is like my gift to kick off 2024 for people that need to get themselves organized, get on top of things. And, you know, it's not a one-stop shop fits all. We are all different. We are all at different levels of our um, development. We all use technology differently. You know, I'm still a very pen and paper person. I use a planner, but I also maximize technology um, with reminders and things like that. So I really try to tailor it so that I meet you where you need me. Um, you know, I'm not going to give somebody the same game plan as I may give to you. Um, just because of where you are in your development. One of the things that I've heard you say is about your schedule mm -hmm. and your calendar and how you mix your personal calendar yes. with your work calendar. Yes. And how your direct reports, people who work on your team, mm -hmm. they are, mm -hmm. they can see all the things. I am an open book. Yeah. So one of the things I tell people when they join my team, I'm like, uh, I live my life out loud. I'm not saying that you have to, but everything is on my calendar. For years, I had a work calendar and then I had my personal family calendar. And I was meticulous with both of them. I spent a tremendous amount of time trying to make sure I was keeping up with dates and changes and things like that. And I realized when I was like late for an appointment or something that I thought was virtual that was supposed to be in person, um, and I missed an appointment that was on my personal calendar that I had not synced and moved over to my work calendar. I was like, this isn't working for me. So I have everything in one place, one stop shop, color coded, um, so that I know always what's happening for me, for my family. So my family has a color. My daughter has her own color. Um, my boss has a color. Um, my direct reports have a color. If it's a regular recurring touch base at work, it has a color. And it really has helped me stay super focused. Um, it helps me plan better. So at the beginning of the week, 
on Sundays. That's my download day where I get ahead of what's going on for the week. And I can look on Sunday and say, oh, I have a doctor's appointment at two o'clock on Wednesday. That's not going to work because I really need to be at this meeting. So Monday, I can call the doctor and see if I can change it or I change my appointment, you know, one or the other. But I have much less of the um, surprises. If I look at something and see I'm traveling next week, my flight doesn't get in until five and I need to be somewhere for my daughter. So I can say to my husband, hey, I need you to pinch it for me. I'm not going to be back in time. Can you go Um, call my sister, ask her to do a pickup for me, that type of thing. And so it just leads to less emergencies and less of that waking up that day trying to figure out plan B, C and D. Oh, we've all been there. Oh, yeah, (laughs) for sure. So do you put your appointments on there, like um, your dentist and like workouts? Everything. So, oh, And what I really learned as I focus on self-care, because that's been a huge focus for me personally, is really taking time for me. Um, literally, I schedule everything. So if my dentist appointment is on there, so is my workout. So I used to go to Pure Bar all the time and you would see I would on Sunday, I was doing download day. I would look at the calendar for Pure Bar and see what classes I could take that week based on my work calendar, what time I could get out of the office, that type of thing. And I literally would plan it. I'd put it in, you know, in the app, what class I was going to take, and then I'd put it on my calendar. What we really have to remember and focus on is that we are just the same priority and just as important as work. Yes, we are getting paid to be there. But if we don't take care of ourselves, we won't even be able to be there. So my hair appointments, I just got my eyebrows done before this. Uh, that was on there, like literally everything. Yeah. And it's modeling, good leadership, what you want them to do for themselves mm-hmm. as well. Take care of you. Absolutely. Make sure that you're a priority. Make sure you're calendaring time for you. Mm-hmm. It's it's mm-hmm. so important. Like if you see my posts on LinkedIn, they're not all about what I'm doing at work. Exactly. My post exactly. on LinkedIn is uh, I worked out this weekend. I went hiking. I can't wait to get back exactly. to the leadership meeting exactly. this week. When they ask me what I did, I can say that I did, you know, my half marathon. Like exactly. I'm trying to be an example. We got to live. We have to live. And work we is stressful. It's very stressful. And I think being able to bring your whole self to work. So like what you just said, being able to say I'm hiking, I'm this so that I can be present, so that I am ready and open for whatever work has for me and those challenges. I think being able to bring your whole self to work, you really get the best out of a person. If I'm stressed out because I need to leave every day at four o'clock to pick my daughter up from daycare and I don't open my mouth and say, I can't do 3.30 meetings or I can't do four o'clock meetings. And every day we're hoping somebody doesn't schedule that 3.30 meeting so that then have to be late or you have to make up an excuse. I just block it out. So every day you'll see on my calendar, four to five is blocked out and it's blocked out. I either do email catch up. If I'm working from home that day, I return phone calls at that time or from four to five, I'm driving home. I am leaving the office and I'm driving home because that is my time. And I don't take meetings. I don't schedule meetings after three o'clock any day. Wow. So what what do, what would you say to someone who is a, a, like a lower, might be a management level, mm-hmm. they're trying to get to your level, they're scared to set those boundaries mm-hmm. about being able to leave at four because they can't mm-hmm. go pick up their daughter or whatever, yeah. right? They don't want to be seen as somebody who's not going to be a team player, somebody who's not going to go yep. the extra mile, yep. the superwoman thing. Hey, I don't want to be looked over. I can do this and I'm willing to stay late and do all the things. Mm-hmm. What do you mm-hmm. say to that person who's like, I got, I can't say no. I can say to them, I was that person and I didn't say no and I regret it. I regret it all day long. I look back on the Saturdays that I went into the office just to be seen. I used to come in early because I felt I needed to be there before my boss and I stayed late because I felt I needed to be there after my boss. And I look back at that and I think of all of the things that I missed you know, the uh, family things that I missed or just quality time for myself, going to the gym, sleeping. You know, there were just things that I missed because I was so focused on everybody else's priorities. So I say you have to be bold and you have to be brave 
and you have to create your boundaries. I'm not going to say that they're never going to be broken, that your boss comes to you and there's a project. And so you've got to stay late and do that. There's always those kinds of things. But I really think your leaders will have respect for you for knowing who you are and what your priority, what your priorities are. You should be able to bring your whole self to work. And honestly, when your leadership and your boss learn a little bit about you and the things that are important to you, they'll respect that. You know, they'll understand family is really important to this person. I love getting to know the people on my team. I like to know what makes them tick because then it helps me know they're motivated by X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to make sure that I dial into that and help them get to where they need to be. If I know that, you know, somebody has a long commute, I'm not going to schedule a three o'clock meeting because that person has a long commute home. I'm going to say like, let's try to do our touch bases in the mornings. Um, so I think that leadership is actually open to it because they're humans. They're just like we are, you know, they have the same responsibilities. They want to be with their families. They've got to pick up their kids. And I think that um, there's just a real stigmatism around that. I really love how you, how thoughtful you are, right? About the people that you work with and wanting to, you know, sincerely understand how their life looks and what it, how it works. Mm -hmm. And I hope mm -hmm. that there are people in the audience today who are also leaders who will take that sort of perspective, mm -hmm. because I just think you can have so much more of a better, more thriving team. Absolutely. If you, Absolutely. if you take that perspective and you embrace it and that's how you operate from that sort of lens. Yes. I will tell it just, you, it can make a world of difference. People turnover will be less. Absolutely, people will get more output, exactly. right? Just because they want to exactly. please the person who cares about exactly. them genuinely. Exactly, and that's what I have seen. I can honestly say, my success isn't because I'm the brightest or the best at what I do. There are a lot of really good people out there, and I'm smart. I mean, I do good at my job. I am talented, but a lot of my success, I can honestly say, is because of my relationships and the people that work on my team directly and my cross-functional partners, they have my back because they know I have theirs. I treat them with respect, they treat me with respect. I'm there for them, I'm flexible when they need me to be, they're flexible when I need them to be. So the relationships that you have, taking time to get to know your people and your team really will take you a long way and help you be much more successful than necessarily being the smartest person in the group. Yeah. So who is this class for? Like oh what's the avatar? The class is for ev literally everyone. If you go to my website, I've created these avatars. And you know what? At some point in my life, I've been all of them. So this class is for, first of all, anybody that is seeking balance and harmony in their lives. I don't really believe that there is something called work-life balance. I believe that there is work-life well-being. And that is what the goal should be. How do you create harmony in your life so that you can be super productive when you need to be, but that you are able to find time to do the things that bring you joy and that you love to do? And if that's laying on the couch watching TV, then that's what that's your thing. If it's running or hiking, then that's your thing. Taking a dance class, spending time with your kids, whatever that is, I've realized over the years, that's really what my productivity is all about. So I think about myself, one of my avatars is a 20-something, uh, recently out of college or graduate school, trying to climb that corporate ladder, wanting to work all the time and feeling like they can't say, I've got to leave early because they're not married. They don't have a child. They don't have some of those responsibilities. But you know what? Your time is important too. It's for that single mom who I was for 10 years, who is, yep. Juggling it all, trying to be superstar at work, trying to take care of their child, their household, your kids are late for appointments, you're going through the drive through every day because you do not have time to cook. You just don't have the, cap the capacity to deal with all those things. It's for the stay-at-home mom that's married with two kids and everybody thinks, oh, they have the perfect life, they have time, they have this, they have that. Meanwhile, that person is like, oh, I don't have time for me. I can't do anything. I'm taking care of everyone else. So it is for all those people and, and then some. So I think I created the avatars because I wanted people to see themselves and see, you know, how they can be helped at different points in their life and in their career. 
You guys heard it. I know you heard yourself in there <laughs> somewhere, right? And this isn't just for women, right? No. This is for anybody. We all need to master time management mm-hmm. and organization. I, I was listening to something the other day and she said, one of the reasons that she feels like, and this was a master order organizer lady, mm-hmm. and she was saying that she believes one of the reasons that people procrastinate is because they don't have any clarity around what they should be doing. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I was like, that's me. Yeah. Because it gets overwhelming. It becomes overwhelming. Yeah. And so then you're just like, I'm just going to wait even longer because I don't even know where to I'm start. I'm just going to scroll. Right? <laughs> I, I just don't even know where to get started. So I'm just going to keep waiting. And um, that is why my um, my alter ego is Download Debbie. And that's the the image that I have on my on the cover of my workbook. And I use her in a lot of my um, um, PowerPoints and things like that. And so if I did not have my download day, I'm telling you, I would be a hot mess. And because I'm super organized and I kind of very structured, I can get away without do, doing my download day, maybe even for two weeks, because I can kind of know how to, you know, move it. But after a while, I'm like, oh my God, what is happening? I've got post-it notes everywhere. I've got little scraps of paper. I have my planner. I'm like, what is going on? So literally that day for me, some days it, t- it takes 30 minutes. Some days it's two hours. If I'm trying to balance my checkbook, you know, do pay some bills, schedule some appointments. It may take me longer, but I literally take all the scraps of paper, the mail, the post-its, um, and I pull out my calendar and I start adding stuff in and moving things around and making those shifts and checking emails, returning phone calls, or making that list of, oh my gosh, I didn't return these texts. I didn't return these phone calls. I use that time that is blocked out for me to get myself ahead of the game. You're so amazing. I think you're so you amazing. Really you really are. <laughs> you really are. All right. So how do people sign up for this class? I will um, put my link tree in, but my link tree is probably the easiest space. There's a link directly to the workshop. The workshop is $24. It is January 24th at 7 p.m. Eastern time, 90 minutes. Um, and there's also a link to my workbook. Um, that I will send out. And it is twenty dollars. You can take the work, um, the workshop without the workbook, but it is definitely something that you will go back and use, not only in the workshop, but hopefully as you're trying to plan and get yourself out of chaos. All right, you guys, don't say I didn't give you a treat. Don't say I didn't care about you. <laughs> I, I brought you the best of the best, and she is giving you a sweet deal because she cares about you too. And we all want to be successful this year and we all want to live on the bright side of 50 and the bright side of 50 is getting rid of some of that chaotic kind of vibe that we have oftentimes around life and family and work and those types of things. So you guys get in this masterclass. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can work my calendar around so I can see you there too, because I would love to take it as well. I would love to. Um, But Leslie... Leslie, thank you so much you. for being here. Thank you. It is a privilege and an honor. I appreciate you reaching out and so glad to connect and just happy to be here and meet your audience. Awesome. Well, maybe we'll have you back Absolutely. to talk about some other things. I would love that. Yes. Love that. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for being here again for another episode of The Bright Side of 50 with Carla Palmer. I will see you guys next week. Don't forget to hit the notification follow button. If you're on YouTube, do it there. If you're on Spotify, do it there. Do it in both places. It would really be helpful if you shared out the information to other women you think would benefit from this. Um, And then also you can follow me on Instagram, The Bright Side of 50. And I am also on YouTube. Okay, so thanks guys so much. We will see you next time. Bye, Leslie. Thanks again. Take care.